Welcome back to Task and Purpose. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Caffey. The SCAR rifle has gone through a lot of controversy, and I think part of the reason why it's got this high production cost and high expectations. The military wanted a dream weapon, right? No pressure, SCAR, just do everything better always or else. The SCAR was created to be multi-caliber while also being more reliable and extra accurate. Its story is something of a roller coaster because it was adopted by special forces, then it was unadopted and tossed away, and now just recently the new SCAR 20S might be making a comeback. Look, I'll be honest, I'm biased towards the SCAR. It's one of my favorite weapons. I got to test fire it using plastic polymer cased ammo, which gives it less visible flash signature compared to brass. Look at how on the bottom of the screen where I'm firing the polymer cased plastic ammunition, it has way less flash than the top of the screen where I'm firing the brass cased ammunition. The reason for this is because the shape of the plastic cased ammo can be made in a unique way that requires less gunpowder. The manufacturer, True Velocity's Chief Engineering and Development Officer, Dr. Ken Overton explain. Two 308 cartridges. This is a standard brass cartridge. This is our composite cartridge. So our polymer case is an insulator as opposed to brass, which is a conductor. So a good portion, which means that we're burning more efficiently, we're getting the same output with less input. The polymer rounds for the SCAR are 30% lighter than the brass counterparts. The difference is noticeable when you pick it up. There's an alternate universe out there somewhere where the US Army adopted the SCAR with these polymer rounds. Believe it or not, the chamber was completely cool to the touch after firing a full magazine of plastic cased ammo. The energy created during the internal ballistic vent is transferred into the chamber in a normal weapon through conduction of heat through the cartridge case. We transfer far less heat than brass does. Putting brass rounds through it felt great too, don't get me wrong. A lot of people will report experiencing less felt recoil with this weapon, probably because it has a lower rate of fire than some similar weapons. So why has the SCAR rifle gotten so much hate by others over the years? What was the thought process behind why FN made these design choices? And is this rifle still a good choice for the future? Sure, we all know it's the best weapon for murking people in Fortnite, but is that also true in real life? The name comes from the specific weapons trial that SOCOM initiated in the early 2000s. It was the direct result of special forces trials, which means that the expectations are going to be wildly high for this thing to not only shoot well, but also make me a dang sandwich. SF needed the SCAR to work because at the time, in the early 2000s, you gotta remember, the M4 was not standing up well in the face of sustained combat. It had problems with barrels melting. Keep in mind, the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan had really just kicked into full gear at the time. The thought that everyone's primary weapon, the M4, was malfunctioning constantly constantly and didn't pack enough of a punch was a real problem. The whole idea behind the SCAR was that they wanted to give troops the option of having a higher caliber or lower caliber depending on the mission. And if everything went according to plan, they would be able to replace the M4, the M16, the Mark 12, and possibly even the M14 all at the same time. Eventually, they would come up with a realization that the real value of the SCAR was in its ability to be lightweight squad designated marksman role. Similar to how the Russians have an SVD in many of their squads, the tactical importance of having a SCAR H on hand as an option is that it allows troops to reach out to 1,000 meters while being three pounds lighter than all, most of the other solutions that can do that. Which might not sound like a lot, but that ends up meaning that you can carry 60 additional rounds on your person, and that ammo is precious. The FN SCAR is completely ambidextrous, select fire, long stroke gas piston system. We'll focus on the SCAR H heavy version, because this is the version that's seen the most use in the US military, and we'll find out why in a second. The weapon weighs 3.58 kilograms, or 7.9 pounds, and has a 16 inch barrel with a max effective range of 600 meters for a point target with a relatively low rate of fire set at 600 rounds per minute. This would give the regular average infantryman a longer range solution while weighing around the same amount. The only other option that would reach out that far would be the 10 pound Mark 12 or the 11 pound Mark 14, which is like the M14 sniper rifle advanced. The SCAR is built and manufactured in Columbia, South Carolina at FN Hersel, the American subdivision called FN America. Something that troops might not have liked about the weapon was it couldn't use the traditional M203 grenade launcher, which I still maintain is the pinnacle of all nade launching technology. And ever since then, everything has just been messing with perfection. Instead, they had to use the new fangled FN40GL. The advantage of this launcher is the tube breaks away to either side, which makes it easier to reload. It has a shorter barrel than the traditional M203, and it can fire new types of non-lethal grenades. 
but it weighs more and wraps around the whole body, the rifle in order to attach it, which looks like it gets in the way of just about everything. You would think this amount of Picatinny rail system bolted everywhere could get a simple grenade launching solution on there. So it's called a third generation launcher because it can be fired from either a standalone separate from the rifle or as an underslung. I have to admit, there are some nice new quality of life improvements here like the double action trigger, which has a long and heavy pull to prevent accidentally firing around under stress when you're being shot at, you might accidentally pop one off. Initial SCAR versions from this time period use larger receivers so troops could mount all calibers to that single body. But this meant that the body had to be even larger than using the smaller caliber. So they split the rifle into heavy and light versions instead. The SCAR-L had an initial low rate, initial production trial with special forces around 2007, which ended with the decision to not adapt that version. In 2009, the 75th Ranger Regiment actually did adopt the 600 SCAR-L carbines and deployed to Afghanistan to test them out in combat. It's a common step for equipment being adopted by the military after testing. Typically there's that low rate production order and then there's the hands-on testing with a small number of actual troops. SOCOM did it a little bit differently on this time, whereas most of the time the equipment gets sent to line units where the level of experience of the soldiers testing the equipment is everything from 10 years in service to brand new privates. In this case, it was sent to specifically special operators and trainees from special schools, the most elite troops with decades of experience. Troops did not like the reciprocating charging handle, even though that was a feature specifically put there by SOCOM. SOCOM wanted a weapon that was as reliable as the AK. At the end of the day, FN Herschel only placed that reciprocating charging handle on the SCAR because a few higher ups in SOCOM thought that that's what made the AK reliable. Modern versions of the SCAR no longer have that moving charging handle. The performance must have been lacking versus the cost because two years later, the Rangers completely ditched the SCAR-L. Rumors started to swirl that the way the recoil impulse happens on the SCAR, that it kills the zero of your scope quickly. So troops were missing their targets even though the hardware was technically more accurate than the M4. Soldiers who noticed this attribute it to the violent action of the long stroke gas piston that cycles just underneath where you mount the optic. Some people say the buttstock looks like an UGG boot, but I think it looks like a beautiful UGG boot. Around 2018, it started to pop up in videos and online weapons forums all over the internet that the Navy SEALs and everyone hated this weapon. So the problems with the SCAR rifle, even though I love this weapon, it wouldn't be fair of me to not include some of the reported problems with its development. A lot of these issues have since been worked out, but I believe that the initial missteps here are what led to its strange reputation where you hear some people loving it and others hating it based on what version they used. So we know why the SCAR has this controversial charging handle, but what exactly is the problem? A reciprocating charging handle simply means that the charging handle moves with the bolt carrier group after a round is fired and moves the length of the action while the weapon is cycling. There are some anecdotal reports that the SCAR has lower felt recoil compared to other similar carbine platforms. Some claim that this has to do with the mass of the bolt carrier group moving in this way. I'm not sure if that's actually how the physics of this gun works or if it's just in everyone's head that the SCAR has lower recoil. So the problem with this type of charging handle is that it can hit an obstacle in the middle of this movement and prevent the weapon from fully cycling. Something as simple as placing your hand in the incorrect position could prevent the weapon from firing. And a lot of special forces operators train in non-traditional firing positions. So this presents a clear problem. If you fire from a barricade or even from a rucksack, it can get caught. So it looks like I might need to find a new place to stow my snacks. While the SCAR performed favorably in tests with the prototype version, once you start using the mass produced version of the weapon in real world applications, the charging handle was reportedly starting to induce stoppages. The SCAR also had a reputation for being hot. The bottom Picatinny rail was attached to the barrel and would get noticeably hot faster than the M4. And there was a nail in the coffin for the SCAR L where loose brass could get stuck in what I would call the gas port, but really the recess for the piston in the top of the receiver. The SCAR H didn't have this problem because the piston was large enough to fill the recess. So the benefits of the SCAR, the long stroke gas piston does provide great reliability and it does hold up better than the gas impingement rifles in sustained firing. So it's great specifically for special forces operators. Plus the thing is great when suppressed in comparison to the M4 where gases can get, you know, they escape through the charging handle and it throws hot gas directly into your mouth, not delicious. The SCAR doesn't have that problem. Usually this piston system decreases a weapon's accuracy with piston driven AR rifles usually suffering from reduced accuracy in independent testing. The SCAR is incredibly accurate because SOCOM requires accuracy of no more than 
one minute of angle at 300 yards for all barrels. Some civilian shooters say that they can get sub minute of angle groups and sometimes even sub half minute of angle groups. Minute of angle is a measurement of your shot group. So if you fire a group of five rounds at 100 yards and they're all within an inch of each other, that would be considered one minute of angle group. The SCAR has better accuracy than even the M14, which is specifically meant for that role. The future of this weapon is kind of a redemption of every SCAR fan out there. The SCAR 20 is an accuratized version of the SCAR H with a long barrel. Just when everyone was starting to think that the SCAR was dead, starting in 2020, FN is gonna have the 20S with a new 6.5 Creedmoor and 20 inch barrel. Gunsandammo.com reported in an article that they think that it'll have accuracy out to over 1400 meters. Each one comes with a Surefire Pro Comp muzzle brake that allows for faster follow-up shots. And the fact that the Creedmoor has lower recoil to begin with makes the SCAR 20 possibly the best version so far. And the SCAR has seen military service in the US, Belgium, 15 other different countries around the world. So I don't think it'll be going anywhere